in 2017, Trek created the Slash as the answer to the enduro long travel trail bike that descends like a rocket ship, but can still get up to the top of a climb, revolutionizing the whole enduro side of things with 29 inch wheels. And this in front of us here is the Gen 2 version that takes it a step further with longer slacker geometry, 170 millimeters of front travel and 160 rear, as well as a whole host of other things to talk about too. And in this James the Bike Guy video, we're gonna do just that. We're gonna talk about the features and designs of this bike, go over all of those specs. But of course, we're gonna put this Trek Slash 9.8 GX on a scale and find out exactly what it weighs. As I was saying in the intro, this being the Gen 2 version, this is the second generation of the Trek Slash. Now, Trek for a long time has had their enduro trail bike called the Remedy. And before that, you had a model called the Liquid, which goes way back in time. But in 2017, they came out with this, the Slash, which was the entry of a 29er enduro bike. So 29 inch wheels today, are pretty much on everything because we know that they're faster and able to be a bit more capable while maybe not as playful as the smaller 27 and a half or 26 inch wheels but on an enduro rig like this it's all about how fast you get to the bottom of the trail how close the bike can perform to a true dh bike but also the requirement to be able to get back up as well a bike like this the Slash can be more than just a downhill rig because it's got geometry, it's got those 29er wheels and a pedaling platform that's gonna be efficient enough to climb up. Now for the Gen 2 version, that came out in 2021 and the version we're looking at here, this 9.8 GX means that this is gonna use Trek's OCLV carbon fiber frame that's assembled here in the United States with 160 millimeters of their ABP rear suspension, and then up front, 170 millimeters of front suspension. Now, starting off with the back, this being ABP means that this is their active braking pivot rear end. So a concentric bearing around the through axle and back, which means the brake effectively stays in the same position regardless of where the suspension is in its stroke. So you don't get any of that lockout like you do on some suspension designs, but it's also gonna work in its ability to pedal with this bearing up above the bottom bracket. That means we've got some pretty decent anti-squat characteristics, but ABP is all about anti-rise and the ability to be progressive to this rear RockShox Super Deluxe rear shock. Now this utilizes Trek's through shaft technology, which is a fancy way of saying the IFP that's inside of here, the internal floating piston, which is part of the oiling system, can poke out of the bottom, which allows a bit less aeration to the rear shock, and especially on an elongated descent, should give you quite a bit more control. And then they connect it up on this 9.8 with a RockShox Zeb front fork. Now this, of course, being the 170 millimeter variant utilizes 38 millimeter stanchions, which is just downright huge to control the front end. Of course, boost through axle up front as well as in the rear. And along with being able to adjust this fork with your air, with compression adjustment, with rebounds, one of the things I really like about these Zebs and most of the RockShox forks is it's got gradations for your sag based on travel. So as you can see here in the 170, when you weight the bike, you're gonna be able to see what your sag is, making the setup out of the box quite a bit easier. And along with that suspension design that's going on this new bike, there's a few more frame features that I wanna point out. First would be, of course, the threaded bottom bracket. Nice to see that addition on this bike. They also go to internal frame storage which if you've followed my channel, you know I love this because it allows you to pack all of your repair gear and needs into here, be able to put snacks inside your down tube, whatever you want, all integrated into the bike. So no more do you have to have a strap around your seat post to carry your tube and that kind of gear, just clicks in right underneath the water bottle cage. Of course, this OCLV carbon frame that then runs up front to knock block 2.0. Now, knock block is a feature that keeps the handlebar from spinning 
all the way around. You see it kind of locks out the handlebar turn here. Now this 2.0 is new on the Slash and to the best of my knowledge, not shared on the other Trek bikes, but Knock Block, the original generation, was knocked, big part in the pun, because it only allowed 58 degrees of steering movement. And this Knock Block 2.0 allows 72 degrees of turn utilizing Bontrager's stem setup, but you can actually remove this Knock Block system entirely if you don't want it on your bike and run a standard stem as well. Nice that Trek doesn't lock you into that. You also have internal cable routing, which is all run through nice and neatly on this. And one of my favorite pieces is this new shuttle guard. So on the bottom of the, uh, the down tube, it's got a two piece shuttle guard. So you've got one that's going down under the bottom bracket and up. And then of course this piece here. So if you're putting it on the tailgate of a pickup truck, it's gonna help protect the down tube. It's gonna protect against rock strikes down there, anything that the tire's kicking up to the bike. And because they're individually replaceable, once they get banged up and worn out, you can take them off. The other big change on this bike is gonna be in the seat tube. So this is now a 34.9 diameter seat tube. That allows for larger, beefier dropper posts and the ability to run some pretty long lengths of that dropper as well. Now, of course, I'm sure you're wondering the geometry and in front of us is a size medium, in which case you've got a pretty generous reach of 456 millimeters, a head tube angle of 64.6 and high and 64.1 and low, a seat tube angle of 76.1 and high and 75.6 and low, and then of course, a chain stay length of 435 millimeters. And those geometry numbers are adjustable by adjusting the minnow link that's on the rocker link. So where the seat stay comes up, you've got this spot to be able to adjust a high and low position of that minnow link system. Going to that super deluxe rear shock and Zeb up front should give you all the control you need for a pretty rowdy bike downhill that can still get up. And the actual weight of this Trek Slash 9.8 in a size medium comes in and weighs 31.94 pounds. Thanks for joining me on this James the Bike Guy where we got a chance to check out this Trek Slash 9.8. It's a pretty killer rig and I'm interested to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think of it? As well as browse the channel so you can see more videos like this to check out as well.